Hello, I'm Waffles Are Better. In this video, I will be showing you how to create custom super flat Minecraft dimensions like this one around me. If I jump down here, you can see that um, below me, there are different layers of blocks. Uh, let me just switch into first person mode. Got uh, ice, packed ice, um, bedrock down here. And all the way up here, we have snow. In this video, I'll also be showing you how to create debug dimensions. But those are pretty simple, so only take up a small portion of this video. As usual, if anything covered in this video is changed in the future, there will be a pinned comment either telling you how to fix it or sending you to a new video. And as usual, there is also a download for this pack in the description. I'd also like to give a huge thank you to my first sponsor, mcmodels.net. A link to mcmodels.net is in the description, as well as a link to their Discord server. And I will talk more about them later in the video. So I've got an example data pack here. Uh, the name is example dimensions. Then you've got uh, inside of that a data folder and then your namespace folder. And just like all other data packs, this can be named whatever you want, as long as it is in all lowercase and only contains letters, numbers, or underscores. And then inside of that namespace folder, which I have named example, you want another folder called dimension. And of course, like all data packs, you need pack.mc meta. Uh, which I've gone over before, and so pack format determines what version the game thinks the pack is compatible with, and the description is just the in-game description of what the pack does. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new file and call this debug.json, and this is just going to be the file for my debug dimension. And debug dimensions are really simple. They don't even have any config. All I need to do is make some curly brackets, and then inside of those curly brackets, you need to put generator, oops, generator, and more curly brackets. And then in here, type Minecraft debug. And then a comma after this curly bracket here. Uh, then you're going to want to put type. This is probably just going to be overworld. And so that's just the dimension type. And I went over this in my first custom dimensions tutorial. So basically all this will do will create a debug dimension with the overworld dimension type. And that's really all you need in this folder. So let me just show you what that'll look like. So I'm just going to create a creative world um, and just paste the data pack into the data packs folder. So I'm just going to close that. And you can see it showed up here. So then I'm just going to do slash execute in um so the dimension i want is example debug run tp and then relative coordinates and this should take me to the debug dimension um i believe i need to teleport to zero zero for there to be anything here yeah here we go so this includes every block state in the entire game so this is every possible note block every possible fire block, every possible piston, every possible bed, uh, and so on. There's a ton of these. There's many, 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 many block states. It's just for use in debug. However, it might be interesting to have as a survival dimension, some kind of weird challenge or something. Anyway, that's the debug dimension. Um, so if you find this interesting, then... So if you find this interesting, then maybe you'd want to do something like this. Um, but what's more helpful is the super flat dimension or the flat dimension type. So let me do this to go over to that. Before I go into how to create custom flat dimensions, I'd like to take a moment to talk about this video's sponsor, mcmodels.net. mcmodels.net is a website where you can buy some of the best Minecraft models that I've seen out there. Everything there is quality controlled, so you can know that what you're going to get is super great. And soon, I'm going to start selling things like World Gen Data Packs there. Hello, welcome to MC Models, your one-stop shop for all server resources. We have everything from custom item models, schematics and mythic mobs bosses, to model engine mobs, decorations and NPC voice packs. If you've never used custom models or need help with model engine, we have easy to follow tutorials on a ton of subjects, as well as great community support and commission requests on our public Discord server. What are you waiting for? Make your server better today. I wouldn't advertise anything unless I thought that it was actually good quality 
and a helpful resource, and mcmodels.net is just that. All right, advertising's over. Now it's time to go into custom flat dimensions. So I'm going to just create a new file, and this is going to be called flat.json. And in here, just like all the other dimension files, you're going to need uh, curly brackets. Then in here, just like before, you need to put generator. Um, and then this is going to have curly brackets again. Then you need to put type. And this is going to be flat this time. And then after the type, you're going to want to put a comma and then put settings. Oops, I forgot to put an S. And then another curly bracket. Then again, you're going to want to put layers. Um, this is going to have square brackets this time. And these are just going to be what the layers of the dimension are going to be. So you know how if you create a custom super flat preset, for example, how this one has one layer of bedrock, two layers of dirt, and one layer of grass blocks. Um, you can either add or remove layers. So for example, I could make it so there are, let's say, there is a layer of 10 diamond blocks um, between the two layers of dirt and the one layer of grass blocks is basically what this layers section in your dimension file is. So for a layer, you're going to want to put curly brackets again, and then you're going to want to put height, and this is going to be the thickness of each layer. So in the example I just showed, there was a layer of 10 diamond blocks thick, and then a layer of one grass block thick on top of that. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is do a height of one, and then I'm going to put block, and this is going to be Minecraft Bedrock. Oh, I'm going to change this up here to Minecraft Flat. Uh, it doesn't make a difference. I just like how that looks better. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to recreate that world that I just showed. How it was going to have um, a layer of Bedrock on the bottom, two layers of dirt, ten layers of diamonds, and then one layer of grass blocks. So the way this works is the... Uh, if I just copy all of this and paste it again, the layer at the top is the bottom layer. So bedrock will generate on the bottom, and the layer on the bottom is the top layer, and anything in between generates in that order. So if I make this a height of two dirt blocks, then it'll generate one bedrock on the bottom and then two dirt blocks on top. Then if I copy this again, I can make it a height of 10 diamond blocks. And so this way it'll be bedrock on the bottom, dirt above that, diamond blocks above that. And then again, there's going to be a height of one, and then this is going to be grass block. So that's just the example I gave. I don't actually want my dimension to be dirt, grass blocks, and diamonds. So I'm going to mess around with this a little bit. I'm going to make the second layer um, five blocks high, and the block is going to be maybe packed ice, and then there's going to, actually this is going to be 20 blocks, and then this is going to be five blocks of just regular ice, and then on top of that it is going to be two blocks of snow blocks. So the way this will generate is a layer of bedrock, 20 layers of packed ice, uh, five layers of ice, and two layers of snow blocks. So in total, that should be uh, 28 blocks, and the block that you're going to be standing on when you're in the dimension is going to be 29. So after this square bracket for layers, you'll find the second square bracket here, put a comma after that, and then you're going to want to put biome, and this is going to be what the biome of the world is going to be. So for me, uh, I think I want this to be frozen ocean um, because it won't generate an ocean it will generate all of this stuff but uh, it should generate the iceberg hopefully i have not actually tested this i don't know if that'll work so next you want to put lakes uh, this is optional you don't have to include this if you don't include it it will default to false i think so i'm going to set this to false and remember when you're doing true and false values um you don't put quotation marks around it. And so what lakes does is probably pretty easy to guess. It will generate water and lava lakes in your super flat world, but I don't want any of those, so I'll set it to false. So after that is features. 
And this is also true or false, and it's also optional. If you leave it out, it'll default to false, I think. Um, but I'm going to set this to true and features, uh, if you know what features are, which you probably do if you've been watching this series. Features are like trees and other biome-specific stuff like flowers and grass. And I'm hoping that also includes the icebergs from the frozen ocean. But since icebergs in the frozen ocean are partially determined by the surface builder, I'm not actually sure if that'll work. But I'm going to set features to true because this way it should generate a snow layer on top, I think. Actually, you know what? Instead of frozen ocean, I'm going to make this ice spikes because then it'll hopefully generate the ice spikes. I don't know if it actually would. So after features, you're going to want to put structures and the structures list is basically the same structures list that you'd have in noise settings for a noise type dimension, which I have gone over in the past. And hopefully I'll remember to put an I card up in the top right over here. But if not, that video is in my playlist for the frost. So basically what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to just go into the um, the overworld noise settings file. So that is in sliced limes vanilla world gen default pack that is in the description of this video. You're just going to want to go into the overworld noise settings file in vanilla world gen world gen noise settings. Um, and you're going to want to go down to structures right here and copy everything from stronghold all the way down to right here. Copy all that, make sure you get the right curly bracket. Um, as you can see, it is the third one in. Yeah, it's the second one in, actually, sorry. Copy to the second one in, uh, and then I'm just going to paste it here. So I explained all of this in my video on noise settings, but basically what this does, this section right here controls how the stronghold will generate. And each of these structures here control how um, how structures of this type will generate if they are generated in by the biome. So just because you put desert pyramid in with your structures does not mean that a desert pyramid will generate in your dimension. It will only generate in your dimension um, if you have a biome right here that allows that structure to generate. So using a custom biome or using an in-game biome. So for example, I believe ice spikes can only generate mine shafts and maybe maybe there's another one. Maybe they can generate pillager outposts. I'm not sure I'd have to look at the file. So just quickly, spacing is average distance between structures of this type in chunks. Separation is the minimum distance between structures of this type in chunks. And then salt is randomization for how the structure itself actually generates. So if you want a more in-depth explanation on all this stuff, then check out my noise settings video, which again will hopefully be linked up here in an iCard a minute ago, and also will be in my playlist for the frost dimension. So for some reason I had some problems with this uh, structure section right here. So I think just the best thing to do is only put the structures that you want to generate here because for some reason I was having a lot of trouble with getting it to work and it was giving me errors. So just deleting everything that wasn't needed and only putting villages, which is the only one I want, seems to work just fine. So the last thing you're going to want to do is you put type here. And this is just going to be Minecraft um, overworld. This is the dimension type that determines like if there is a fixed time and like if piglins turn into zombified piglins and if beds explode, all that kind of stuff. So I just set it to the overworld type um, because that's probably what you're going to want for your flat dimension. This could also be nether. Oops, that's actually going to be the nether. Um, or it can be the end, or it can be a custom one. But I'm going to use overworld, and again, I covered this in my first custom dimension video if you want to go watch that there. Oh, I spawned right next to a pillager outpost. Alright, so the first thing I need to do is slash execute in, and then example flat. Run tp tilde tilde tilde. Uh, that should take me to the flat dimension. And here we are. Um, for some reason it still generated lakes. Not sure why that is. Alright. Um, 
What's really cool is that since I made the world ice, you can see right through it. Um, but if I go back to this file, uh, you can see that it should be two snow blocks on top, five ice blocks below that, 20 packed ice, and then one bedrock. So that would be... Um, oh, also this flat layer of snow on top is from... It's from the freeze top layer feature in the biome, and so that is not in the actual dimension file. So if you want this freeze top layer feature, which is also what freezes the lakes, that is in a biome. So, uh, anyways, so that's two snow blocks. One, two, three, four, five ice blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty packed ice blocks, and then bedrock. Ah, oops. So I have switched the biome to snowy tundra, which means that villages should generate. If I do slash locate village, yep, villages will generate here. And what's interesting about flat dimensions is that messing with, for example, the spacing and separation. So let me just make the separation three and the spacing five. Um, this will screw up a bunch of stuff, but it'll be cool at least. So as you can see here, uh, we now have a bunch of village houses. This actually screwed up a lot less than I thought it would, um, but you've got a huge village now. This wouldn't work as well on a noise world because, you know, there's hills and things in the way. I have made it so they are much less far apart, so even though this kind of looks like one giant village, um, each of these is actually a separate village. So I should be finding some problems, although so far I don't actually see any. Oh, this is cool. Um, zombie village right here that generated like inside of this village. So it's, it's like an abandoned part of the village. I think that's cool. Uh, yeah, but stuff like this, um, which actually might happen normally. Yeah, but like stuff like this, um, I think this is from a normal village generating on top of this zombie village. Um, you'll find some houses intersecting each other, but surprisingly not that much. And that's not good enough. It's definitely uh, not screwed up enough. Let me fix that. Um, so you're obviously not going to want to do this. All right, I think this has been like three minutes saving, so... Um, I'm just going to give up on it and force quit the game. Uh, at least you now know not to do that. That's it for this video. If you have any questions about anything that I covered in this video, then you can ask me those in the comments. And if you have any suggestions for anything you want me to cover in future videos, then you can give me those in the comments as well. Or for either of those, you can also join my Discord server and talk to me there. Thank you guys so much for 300 subscribers. I... I know I keep saying this, but I really never thought that I would get this far, and I really appreciate you guys so much, and I'm really happy to make videos that are helpful for you guys. And again, thanks to mcmodels.net for sponsoring this video. They're my first sponsor, and I am really grateful for them, just like I am grateful for every single one of you guys. Thanks for watching.